Hey guys, uh, yeah, just wanted to jump in here real quick before the video started and let you know that, uh, at the time of recording this video, I am a little bit sick. So, uh, if my voice sounds a little bit off, uh, that is why. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, I didn't want to push this video off because I wanted to get it out for you. So yeah, let's jump right in. I have ridden 132 different coasters at the time of this video being recorded. And so, I thought it would be interesting to count down my top 5 most underrated and overrated coasters I have ridden. Now let's get straight into the video. Now, this list isn't ordered based on how good the ride is, but based on how over or underrated that coaster is in my opinion. So that being said, let's get right into number 5. Starting us off is the Great American Screen Machine, located at Six Flags over Georgia. Now, before I rode this thing, I had heard nothing but the worst from about pretty much everyone. And by that, I mean people saying it was forceless, had no airtime, the roughest coaster they'd ever ridden, boring, and worst of all, the worst coaster they had ever ridden. So, me and my younger cousin went to the back row and were incredibly nervous as we went on the lift hill. But then I was incredibly shocked to find that the ride wasn't super rough, nor was it lacking in the airtime department. Honestly, I found the ride as a whole to be super fun and offered buckets of fun floater airtime through the entire layout. Only reason it is this low is because I've recently been seeing more people start to talk about it more favorably, but it's still underrated enough to make this list. Now, Montu is not a bad ride, and for a while it was my favorite invert, but after recently getting to rewrite Alpengeist and getting my first ever ride on Great Bear, I've come to realize that while Montu is a really good coaster and great in the park, it simply is not the best invert by a long shot. Currently the ride is my second favorite invert, just ahead of Great Bear and miles behind Alpengeist. And while it definitely has an outstanding four elements with a vertical loop, zero G roll, bat ring, and final corkscrew, it felt like it had some of the other elements that didn't really hit as good as those four. Now this doesn't mean those elements are bad, they just weren't as strong. Comparing that to Alpengeist, where every single inversion either floats you out of your seat or absolutely crushes you with positive Gs. And you know what? Unpopular opinion, Alpengeist's Cobra Roll is infinitely better than Montu's Batwing, and I will die on this hill. <laughs> Next up, we are looking at another wooden coaster, and that is Comet, located at Hershey Park. This is a wooden coaster that is literally dwarfed by the Intamin Hyper right above it, and well, I went in with no expectations, and I was very shocked by the ride experience. The ride features several moments of strong floater airtime, and tons of good laterals which are made even more intense when you take into consideration the fact that you only have a buzz bar restraint, leaving you feeling super open. One thing to keep in mind is that during my visit to Hershey Park, I only got one ride on Comet and the trim on the second turnaround did not hit at all, so I definitely got a really good ride on it. But for now, it will stay on this list as a very underrated coaster. However, that might change whenever I get to ride it again. Staying in the exact same park, we have Candemonium. And wow, was this coaster a letdown. Let me quickly explain. This is not a bad coaster in any way. But I had heard going into it that it's one of the best b and hypers, and well, it just isn't. It's not even close. The ride is far too short for its own good, only featuring three big hills, a speed hill, and two helices, which isn't a lot for a coaster over 200 feet tall. I might just have ruined b and hypers for myself after riding Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia, because that is easily the greatest hyper from B&M, and that is why I just wasn't super impressed by Candemonium. It also doesn't help that they have a far superior hyper with Skyrush. I would like to imagine myself as Georgia Scorcher's number one fan. Now, I understand that stand-up coasters are not for everyone, 
but personally I have this ride ranked above Twisted Cyclone in the same park. There was just something about this one that made it so much more enjoyable than the other stand-ups I have ridden. But it was just so much fun and I absolutely loved my two back row rides. One thing I didn't expect was that I actually got some really fun airtime during the first drop and some of the twists. The ride was also super smooth, not causing me to hit my head even once. I think it's a shame that this stand-up gets lumped in with the other ones as an uncomfortable and painful ride, when it is the complete opposite of that. My first reaction after riding Mako at SeaWorld Orlando for the first time was that it was good but nowhere even close to being the best b and Hyper like most people say. It's like what I said for Candemonium. When I'm comparing b and Hypers, I always look to my gold standard which is Goliath. And well, let's be honest. Mako is good but not even close to being in the same tier as Goliath in terms of layout and ride experience. Okay, let me be positive for a minute. Mako has some absolutely amazing elements such as the 5 second floater hill, twisted hill, and speed hill. Those three elements are debatably some of the best on any hyper, but then again, the entire second half of the coaster is pointless. So, you win one, you lose another. What can you do? The last of the three underrated wooden coasters on this list is Roar at Six Flags America. I truly had the worst expectations when going on this for the first time, because I don't think I'd ever heard a single good thing about this coaster before riding it. And so I went to the front row to attempt to get a somewhat smooth ride, but just like Great American Scream Machine, the coaster absolutely shocked me. Instead of a super rough, boring, and slow ride, I got a decently smooth, airtime-packed, fast-paced coaster with some truly amazing ejector airtime and super strong laterals. The best part of the ride is that it isn't only like this in the front, it is equally as smooth in the back, while also being equally, if not more intense. Now, for the record, I never got to ride the original full speed lightning rod. I only got to ride the version after it got some iBox track put on it, so keep that in mind. I went into lightning rod with moderately low expectations, and at first it blew my mind. But over the past few months, as I've been preparing, my list for the top 25 list, I have been thinking about my visit to Dollywood and Lightning Rod has been slipping down my rankings more and more. The ride just didn't do much. And I don't mean that it was boring because it is the opposite of that. I just felt the ride didn't have that one wow moment that made it feel any different from the other RMCs. Well, it had the launch, but it wasn't super notable. All I can say is that this ride isn't being thrown any bones because now the launch is getting removed, so... Bruh. The most underrated coaster I have ridden is Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. Ever since my first time riding this coaster, I have lived by the belief that it is one of, if not the most underrated throw coaster in the US. And what really proved that to me was my front row ride on it during Carowinds, because not only was the ride absolutely flying, but it was also pitch black during most of the layout. There was not a single dull moment the entire layout, because at any given moment, you were being getting airtime, hang time, or being crushed with positive Gs. Throw in two launches and some pretty nice theming, and I definitely think this is the most underrated coaster I have ridden. If you know me at all, or follow me on Instagram, link down below. And you would know that Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point is far and away the most overrated coaster I have ridden. One good thing I will say is that it definitely does have a lot of airtime, but the problem is it lacks pretty much every other force. Do you want positive G-forces? Too bad. Oh, you want to get some laterals? Out of luck, pal. You want anything other than airtime? <laughs> well, not here, bucko. Look, I'm not saying this is a bad ride, because it definitely is not that. I just can't get behind a coaster that does one thing very well. I am much more into coasters that do everything, such as Copperhead Strike. I can see why this would be your favorite coaster, but personally, it is the most overrated coaster I have ever ridden. And that's a wrap on this video. I hope you didn't get too angry watching this video, because if you did, then I did my job well. But I want to hear from you. 
What is the most overrated and underrated coaster you have ridden? Leave them in the comments down below. And while you're down there, please feel free to subscribe. It's free, and you can unsubscribe at any time. Plus, I'm trying to reach 300 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could help me out with that, it would mean the world to me. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye for now.